87 DY, and I got scared for a second. Lesson 84 is logarithmic differentiation. So here we are looking at how to do differentiation, so how to take some derivatives using logarithmic differentiation. So big thing, when the product or quotient rule could get extremely messy, logarithmic differentiation keeps it a little less messy. I'm not saying the answer will look pretty, the answer still won't look pretty, but it keeps it a little less messy along the way. Okay, it makes it a little more doable. Okay, so that's one thing I put off to the side here is that it can be used instead of product and quotient rules. Now, the one thing you have to remember with logs, the inside of a log can never be not zero, negative. I guess technically it could not be zero either, but more importantly, it can never be negative. So if the inside of a log cannot be negative, while working the problem, you temporarily restrict the x values. So just in your mind, it's kind of like, okay, x has to be positive in this situation. But when we get to the end, we won't actually necessarily have a log in our answer. And so, you know, it's just kind of temporarily along the way. So, example one. Y equals X squared over 3X plus 2 raised to the fourth. They want to know the derivative. So we could, use, we could do the derivative using the quotient rule. Um, that denominator, though, there'd be a power rule and a chain rule. And so that's where it gets, you know, a little different. So what I'm going to have you guys do instead, just like solving exponential equations, what my Algebra 2 kids are doing. We're going to start by taking the log of both sides. Now, because we're going to take derivatives, and the natural log of derivative is easier, generally speaking, you do use natural logs to take the log of both sides of the equation. Not to say you couldn't use log of any other base, but reality, guys, right? So, first step, I'm going to take the log of both sides. So, I'm going to rewrite this first one as the natural log of y equals the natural log of x squared over 3x plus 2 to the fourth. And all that is inside the natural log. Now, we had some properties in logs that we could take to separate a log out like this. Division inside a log, two logs being subtracted. So let's start there. So my left is just going to carry down natural log of y equals the natural log of x squared minus the natural log of 3x plus 2 raised to the fourth. Okay. Then we had another property of logs called the power property that says if you have a number in the exponent, you can take it and put it out front as a coefficient. So let's do that on both. So natural log of y is 2 times the natural log of x minus 4 times the natural log of 3x plus 2. Okay. By rewriting this, again, it's not going to be the prettiest thing still, but we can, use, we can differentiate both sides, use implicit differentiation, where you take the log of each term. If it's in regards to y, you stick a dy on it. If it's in regards to x, you stick a dx on it. In the end, our goal will be to solve for dy dx. Again, answers aren't going to look pretty, but the answer wouldn't have looked pretty if we would have done this with normal derivative rules. So, what is the derivative of natural log of y? All right. 
the derivative of natural log of something is 1 over something. So we're going to say 1 over y times dy. Okay, derivative. Okay, so it's 2 natural log of x. So we have a 2, right? Now what's the, natu what's the derivative of natural log of x? 1 over x. If you multiply that 2 in, that's going to make this 2 over x. Because this was in relation to x, we're going to say 2 over x times yeah. dx. Minus, we're going to have a 4 here, yes. The natural log of 3x plus 2. Derivative of natural log of 3x plus 2? Okay, so it's 1 over 3x plus 2 times the derivative of 3x plus 2. The derivative of 3x plus 2 is just 3. So I can put it's times 3. Can you guys handle if I go ahead and put 3 in the numerator? Along with what else should have been in the numerator? The 4 out front. And then this was this term was also in regards to x, so dx. Can I get another line in there? Maybe I'll go over to the right here. On the right, and you may not need to actually write this stuff out, but on the right. I would kind of think of a factoring step where you factor the dx out, if that makes sense. And so I'm still going to leave it for the moment as 1 over y dy. On the right, I'm gonna, I like to put my dx at the end. So if I factor dx out at the end, I'm going to have the 2 over x from the first one minus, and I'm going to say 12 over 3x plus 2 from the other one. And then factored out is a dx. Can you solve for dy dx? dy is already on the left, yes. So then that means you're going to do what? We're going to divide the dx over to the left, right? So that will divide and come over nicely. That 2 minus x minus 12 over 3x plus 2 just stays. And then what about 1 over y? You would multiply the y over to the other side. So I'm going to write this for the moment as y times the quantity 2 over x minus 12 over 3x plus 2. Final step. This is dy dx, which means my answer should all be in terms of x. What do we know about y? Y was the original problem. Y equals that fraction. So what can I do with Y? Replace it with X squared over 3X plus 2 raised to the fourth. Good news? That's our answer. We leave that disaster as is. So yes, it's gross, but we don't have to work with the gross. So X squared over 3X plus 2 to the fourth times 2 over x minus 12 over 3x plus 2. Because the x on the bottom will cancel with the x squared. What, if you distribute? Yeah, if you distribute. I mean, yeah, there are some things that could be done. But then I don't want to go past that. 
And I say, would you want to get a common denominator, though, also? Because that would be another version of simplifying and making this one fraction. So. <laughs> and Logan's back there saying, I'm not even going to distribute. And, okay, and here's what it comes down to. If we would have done the derivative using our typical quotient rule, this would be an equivalent form, right? Neither of them are pretty, but this would be a typical form or an equivalent. Yeah. Okay. Let's try example two. Okay. It's ugly. It's uglier than the first one. So, yeah, we're really not wanting to... Do this with regular rules, so natural log of both sides. Daryl took the first answer. Natural log of y equals ooh. I was going to save my step skipping for the third example. And unfortunately, I was already in the midst of writing it, so I did not jump steps like Nathan did. However, could we do that? Just goes to show that's what I plan to do on the next example. So, hey, there are, okay, so. Here's what I'm going to do. Let's expand this into all the pieces, and so let's use our quotient rule, our product rule, and our power rule all at once here. So I am going to skip steps here. Now, Nathan already told me the top minus the bottom. What else do you need to do within the top? Yeah, you have two things being multiplied on top, so those two are going to be split into adding. So I'm actually going to rewrite this as not two natural logs, but three. See where I'm going with that? Now, so natural log of x cubed. If you let me go ahead and do the power rule also, I'm going to write that as three natural log of x. Are you guys okay with that? I know it's a lot, but I think, you know, you guys brought it up before I did, so... Plus, Daryl mentioned the sixth thing. You mentioned the subtraction thing. I threw in the plus thing. So, okay, so now we're going to say plus. What about this square root? It's a one half power, isn't it? So we're going to have a one half times the natural log of x squared plus one. And then. The denominator, we're going to subtract that natural log, which has a power of 6. So we're going to say 6 natural log of x plus 2. If you don't like how many steps we skipped all at once, then don't skip so many steps at once. Now what am I ready to do officially? Yeah, take the derivative of each term. Derivative of natural log of y. 1 over y dy. Okay, equals 3 natural log of x. So I agree. 3 over x dx. Be <laughs> 2 x over 2 x squared plus 1. 2 times the quantity x squared plus 1? Yeah. Okay, I see it, I see it. Okay, so we had the 1 half out front. So that's why Trevor has a 2 in the denominator. 
it's the derivative of natural log of this is 1 over x squared plus 1. I hadn't caught that part yet. The derivative of x squared plus 1 is 2x and then add a dx. Now, for the next step, what could clean up just a teensy bit there? Those twos will be able to cancel. I mean, it's not a lot, but hey. Okay. Next part. So, minus six over x plus two. Yep. You forgot the dx. I think Trevor got the worst of that deal. <laughs> By far. I just won't contribute to the next problem. I'll just skip that one. Okay. Um, take as many or as few steps as you need to here. So one thing I'm so I'm going to go ahead and factor out the dx, if you will. So I'm going to say still one over y dy, and I'm going to write this as three over x plus x over x squared plus 1 minus 6 over x plus 2 and all of that in parentheses the quantity okay now what I agree. So I have a student that's working on a test and there's been issues, so I'm trying to reply to her real quick. Did you write the final answer without me? Or are you waiting on me? Okay. So, if I divide and I say dy, divide over the dx, right? And then I have that quantity times y. What did you guys do? Did you go ahead and just put in what y was? So if I go ahead and put in what y is, x cubed square root of x squared plus 1 over x plus 2 to the sixth. And then it's going to be times... 3 over x plus x over x squared plus 1 minus 6 over x plus 2. And realizing that piece was y. I don't know why I wrote 6 over x squared. I don't know, it made me question, did I write mine right? Okay, now, example three. I'm willing to jump steps here. I got the first part, cell and Y. Equals. <laughs> 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 
one half volume of three x plus two. Okay. Okay. Natural log of y equals. Yes. Okay. So if we go ahead and start breaking it up, the first factor on top is the square root of 3x plus 2. Square root is a power of 1 half. So 1 half natural log of 3x plus 2. Because we're taking the multiplied pieces across the top, we're going to add, pull that 4 out front, and it is 4 natural log of x cubed plus 1. Pull the power of 2 out front, natural log of 5x minus 3. All three of those were added because they were all being multiplied. And... Minus 5L of x cubed minus 2. Okay, subtracting because it's the division. Pull the 5 out front. Natural log of x cubed minus 2. Okay, we all answered. Daryl has to do the entirety of the next step by himself. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> man, it's getting rough in here. I answered. I was the second one to answer. <laughs> 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 That's important. If you don't leave that in there, then you just have an expression. Derivative of natural log of y. I'll take the first one. 1y over dy, or times dy. Okay. 1 half means 2 in the denominator. Natural log of derivative of natural log of 3x plus 2. 1 over 3x plus 2 times the derivative of 3x plus 2 is 3. Now, how do you... You could just distribute it already, because you could do 3 over 6x plus 4 by distributing... You could. To, to be honest... Oh, yeah, I guess I did do that in the final answer. So, now, here's what I was going to say. I don't know if anyone said dx. Can we write, wait and write our 1dx at the end? It would save us a step, right? Or maybe you never factor that out and just jump to the next step anyways. But Exactly. They're all x's on the right. Okay. Plus, let's see. The 4 out front is going to be on top. Derivative of natural log of x cubed plus 1. Okay, x to the third plus 1 goes on bottom. Derivative of x to the third is 3x squared times the 4 that's already up there. Plus. Okay. I'm going to write 2 times the 5 over 5x minus 3, and I'll clean it up from 10 on the next step. But the 2 stayed on top. 5x minus 3 on the bottom. Drew of 5x minus 3 is 5. Minus. 15x squared over x cubed minus 2. Okay. 5 is on top. x cubed minus 2 goes on bottom to the derivative. And the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. Thus, why Trevor said 15x squared. I'm going to end a big set of parentheses and say times dx. I'm ready to write my final answer. I'll take the left side. Whole left side. Y over dx. Equals. Y. No, no, no. I'm not going to write y, though. I'm jumping that step. What is y? I do not write that Square root 3x plus 2 times x cubed plus 1 to the fourth times 5x minus 3 to the second over x cubed minus 2 to the fifth. That is y.
That's one. Woof. Maybe it could be one. Maybe it could be. We'll let you solve to figure out one X is one that equals one. Okay, and then just kind of cleaning up what we have in the parentheses next to dx, right? Three over six x plus four plus. Twelve x squared over x cubed plus one plus ten over five x minus three minus fifteen x squared over x cubed minus two. That's how you make your calculus class next week. That is true. It's long. I mean, okay. Yeah, I changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I lied. I lied. I, the answers I mean, are this isn't the time. Yeah. This isn't really that difficult. Okay. Exactly. Next example. This week is still perfect. <laughs> what? Y equal x to the x. Find dy given that the domain of the function is a set of all positive real numbers. So basically restricting the domain to the set of all positive numbers. In the book. This is based on, these numberings are based on the book usually. Well, this, in the book, this would be point four. No, in the book, skipped whatever point four was. But this is point four. Oh, it is? Yeah. There's only five in the book in this house. Another typo? I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways. Okay, step one. Is that a different version than these notes were written for? And they didn't like the example for either? I don't think so. No. I think it's the same version. I think. How old are the books? No. Check the copyright date in the book. <laughs> okay. What do I do? Natural log of y equals. You pull that x out front as the power x natural log of x. Okay. Derivative of natural log of y? 1 over y dy. Equals? No. Not x over x dx. Product rule. Because x is a term. X has its own derivative, right? L and x has its own derivative. They're their own functions. We have to do the product, employ the product rule. So the derivative of x is 1. Keep the L and X. And then plus keep the X, derivative of natural log of X, 1 over X. And then I went ahead and put that side in parentheses and I'm going to say times the X. So if I clean up what's in the parentheses, this becomes. Natural log of x plus 1. This one's a lot less annoying than the previous three, right? I mean, it was annoying because you had to do the product rules, what you're going to tell me, but still better than what we had been doing. Okay. <laughs> dy dx equals y, which is x to the power of x, times Natural log of x plus 1. And that is y. So, are the words given the domain of the function instead of all positive numbers just there to make you stress? Um, well, if you remember from the beginning, I said, you know, 
on each of these problems, we have to temporarily restrict x values to represent positive values only. So it's just specifying because this problem, if x was allowed to be negative, would not be doable. Okay, because of um, the, the way the natural logs are and everything. And the fact that in this one, we have a natural log in the answer. Usually by the time we get to the answer, the natural logs are all gone, right? In this case, the way it works, we have a natural log in the answer. And so in order for this to work, x has to be positive. Right. Well, and the answer exists for positive values, but not negative values. Right. Okay. Last one. Let y equals x to the x to the third plus 4. Find dy dx, given that the set is all positive domain is a set of all positive real numbers. So similar to last time. Natural log of both sides, which is going to be natural log of y equals x cubed plus 4 times natural log of x. Derivative of natural log of y? 1 over y dy. On the right? He says 3x squared natural log of x, and then I interrupted. We're using the product rule again. So derivative of x cubed plus 4 is 3x squared times the natural log of x that stays. And then plus... x cubed plus 4 stays this time. Derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. Officially, that whole side is in parentheses. And we're putting a dx on the end. You can do a little bit of cleanup here. 3x squared ln x isn't really going to clean up. But on the next one, what can we do with that 1 over x? Okay, I was going to say distribute it, and I'm debating if Nathan was going to say that or if he was just going to say put x in the denominator, which equivalent, right? So I was going to say distribute it and make it x squared plus 4 over x. However, if Nathan has x cubed plus 4 all over x, equivalent answer. Okay, dy dx equals... Multiply the y over, which is the x raised to the x cubed plus 4, times 3x squared natural log of x plus x squared plus 4 over x. And again, that was y. Okay, do note, written in down there, number four needs to become eight from 77.